I've been doing my best to figure out ways how I can convert myself to being in a position of wealth as opposed to being in a position of rich because rich is like temporary but like wealth is like eternal. Hey there my handsome and pretty little cobras and welcome back to the Cobra's Nest for those who are here new. My name is Minyoon Cobra and I make minimalism videos. Today's video is going to be 10 fire habits and tips that I have picked up in the previous eight years of being a minimalist. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. Let's get it. Let's go. Let me just uh, fix that. So I was watching Kelly Stamps recently and she always had like a spatula when she would like educate her stamps crew. And I realized I was like, I, I wanna try something like that. So I'm gonna be using the makeup brush to educate the Cobra crew. <laughs> Number one, respect the dollar. This is a tip that I picked up from Mr. Money Stash. He always talked about respecting the dollar. So that is something that I definitely implemented throughout my fire journey. And I would respect and treat every purchase that I made with like with deep gravity. Like this purchase matters because over the long run, all of the small purchases kind of did add up. I think he said respect the $5, but I was pretty broke. So I was like, respect the dollar. Okay, and number two, do not fear the stock market and invest. I've been investing in this for, I guess, almost 10 years. That I know that like the ups and downs of the stock market are kind of scary but I think a little bit of money invested in the stock market can be healthy from it I have seen my money grow with it just even from like the cost of the stock increasing and then just like dividend payout from the company is more than my money just sitting there in the bank okay number three living below your means living below your means it's not the funnest of things I know it's not the glamorous of thing but it's worth it because I don't struggle with money because of it I still figured out creative ways to have a good time that didn't involve spending money which I think is probably one of the things that helped buffer making living below my means not so miserable doesn't mean like the only way to have fun is to spend money like don't get me wrong spending money is fun <laughs> but find that healthy balance of living below your means that is sustainable for you and doesn't feel like torturous number four don't spend your money to show off your money this is a tricky one because as a libra i love shiny things and i love looking good and i love showing off and i love impressing people so this was really difficult for me i had to tell myself that like looking rich is not as impressive it's actually being rich i realized somewhere along the line as i matured i was like okay screw it i think i'd rather just be rich okay number five knowing there's a difference between wealth and being rich so the way that i kind of understand it is that wealth is your ability to live into the future as opposed to rich which is based more on like your income to give an example you can be rich because you have a high income but if you blow all of it and you don't save any of it you're not really wealthy because if the following month comes and you lost your job you wouldn't be able to live into the future as opposed to wealth you may not earn necessarily a lot but if you like save and invest or you have some money tree that like brings in like passive income you can live sustainably into the future without relying on trading your time for money so i've been doing my best to figure out ways how i can convert myself to being in a position of wealth as opposed to being in a position of rich because rich is like temporary but like wealth Wealth is like eternal. Okay, number six, you don't need to earn a lot to have a high net worth. I really did think that the only people who could be rich were people who earned a lot. And if you didn't earn a lot, well then screw it. What's the point of like working hard and saving? It's not like you're gonna be rich anyway, but a book that kind of opened my mind up to that was like The Millionaire Next Door and saying that, you know, like janitors and teachers at the end of like 65, they could have a million dollars. Just kind of opened up my mind to realize that like you can be good with your money. Like you don't have to be a high income earner to have that privilege of being good with your money this is my money i'm gonna micromanage my money i don't need to wait till i have like a bajillion dollars before i start managing my money i need to manage my five bucks my ten bucks and that's going to be the basis for wealth okay number seven the magic of compounding interest it was really motivating to think that like money could work on its own and really kept me from making dumb purchases because i would think you know what like if i just kind of put this money away i would have a little bit of dividend and i'd have a bit more value in terms of stocks finally nice to see money work on its own it did not happen overnight but it is nice to see the compounding magic of interest working for you because on the flip side there's bad debt and that's how we can work against you if you've ever had student loans or just loans in general and the compound works against you like my first payment for my student loans based on the entire principal my first payment just from interest not even on the principal i had to pay 600 dollars in interest and i was like <laughs> what i never pay my visa late just for fear of the compounding interest working against me okay number eight understanding the difference between an asset and a liability so in the plainest of terms an asset is something that generates money for you versus an asset is something that costs money and stand and ask myself like on a really basic fundamental level is it making me money or is it costing me money and and that's helped me a lot to mitigate my desire to purchase or make dumb purchases so like gadgets like iphones and tech i'll be honest the, it's the gadgets that get me i i love technology and i want it new 
you and, and that's where I always have to work on and tell myself like, nah, slow down, think about this. Is this an asset or is this a liability? Nine, respect of active and passive income. Active income is money that you have to work for or like trade your time in or and passive income is money that comes in that is untied to your efforts or your time, like money that works while you sleep. But honestly, at some point you can't really generate passive income till you have put in the time and the effort in the beginning and that is your active income. And I think that we need to bring back this idea that like you still need to do the grind and the hustle in the beginning. So like active income still kind of matters to not be a lazy butt and just be obsessed about passive income, but kind of respect and recognize that active income still matters. Okay, number 10, working on your relationship with money. Is it an abundance or scarcity mindset? And this was a really big and important one for me because I had for the longest of time in retrospective was probably a toxic and scarcity mindset. I mean, like it worked. I definitely got to be in a place of abundance because I operated on a scarcity mindset because I was like, there's not enough money. I'm not gonna be stupid with my money. So I'm just gonna save it and it paid off. Now I feel like I'm in a place of abundance. I can kind of generate more abundance, but like maybe you had to start off with a scarcity mindset. But I think it is really important to work on your relationship with money. Okay, number 11, picking reading books over spending more time on social media. There was a period of time where I was like, nah, I don't feel like reading, screw it. How important or useful can it really be? But the thing about social media is it's just, and this is something that's helped me a lot, is people say that it's one long commercial and it's kind of true. I feel like the more that I spend time away from it, like don't get me wrong, I still love social media. As a content creator, I don't have the right to bash on social media because for me, that is the mode or vehicle that I operate with. But I try to be a producer as opposed to a consumer. So it just makes me a little bit more wary when I'm on social media. I try to remind myself that don't get sucked into wanting to buy all these shiny things that you see and try not to compete against people on social media. It's not healthy. I just, I try to have a healthy balance between the two, not just only social media because it's just junk for your brain. Okay, number 12. Learn from others who are more successful. In my, I try my best to not reinvent the wheel. I try my best to learn from other people who have been successful because they already did it. Let's just learn from them. Stop making stuff up. Just actually get nutritional information from people who've actually sustained and had success. I just read what successful people have done because I just don't feel like repeatedly failing. Okay, number 13. Believing that anybody can do it. It doesn't matter about race or gender because I am neither male and I am neither white. So for me, that already made me feel like I was at a disadvantage. But the more I read about these things, the more I realize that actually it has nothing to do with gender and has nothing to do with race. And that has really freed me because I always kind of put myself in a victim mentality. I'm like, I'm not a white male. Like there's no opportunity for me. That is just so not true. I want to be the first to tell you that it doesn't matter if you're a woman and it doesn't matter if you're a person of color. You are out there hustling, grinding, providing a service for others, learning and growing. You're already going to put yourself way ahead somebody who just doesn't isn't doing any of that. Okay, number 14. Freedom and options is what you're buying. And it's interesting, you won't know what freedom feels like until you start to taste freedom. Once you start to taste freedom, it's like tasting blood and you can never go back. I guess what I've realized money has become for me, it's just become an option provider. Life is just so much easier when you have money. I think life not life without money is just not, it's not a fun way to live and I really don't wish that for anybody. I wish that everybody could have enough to be able to make the best life choices that they can. These nice purchases are nice and it's nice to have them, but if it's at the cost of my freedom and if it's at the cost of my options, it's not worth it. It's kind of like Plato's cave allegory. The person who went out of the cave can't come back and explain to everybody else who's still chained up. You have to go and experience it for yourself. So comment down below what you think of the video, if you have any tips or tricks of your own, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.